Let me tell you of the days of high adventure. Hey there nation, welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Chiefski, and we are back with another episode of the Golden Age. This is our series of weekly Warhammer battle reports, and this is battle report number 89. It is a 3,000 point battle that was fought between Empire as well as Chaos Legion of Corn. My buddy King Khalif was playing the Schwarzwald Free Companies, and I am playing the Gore Pilgrims of the Bloodwind Spoil. And uh, just to let you guys know, I have been doing some more experimenting with this 3,000 point Chaos Legion of Corn army. I know I've been altering the list every single battle report, I'm just trying to look for something that kind of works out for me and how I can best use it. So there are some changes to the army list. So that being said, we're going to play some background music real quick. If you want to see exactly what we're bringing for our armies for this one, go ahead and pause and take a look at your own leisure. So that being said, let's get this battle report on a roll. Krom, I've never prayed to you before. I have no tongue for it. No one, not even you will remember if we were good men or bad. Why we fought, or why we died. No. All that matters is that two stood against many. That's what's important. Barbara pleases you, Kram. So grant me one request. Grant me revenge. And if you do not listen, then the hell with you. Ladies and gentlemen, Boys and girls, dying times here. All right, so the scenario move for this one is Battle Line. It is the most typical game of Warhammer that we play on this channel. Uh, it's got standard deployment as well as standard victory conditions, as always. All right, so here's an overhead shot of the entirety of the battlefield. We're playing on a four by six table. My buddy King Khalifa is deployed on the near side of the table, and I'm deployed on the far side of the table. And pretty much my plan is pretty simple. I'm a Legion of Corn Army. My goal is to get across the battlefield as quickly as possible and engage my opponent in close combat. So I plan on charging down the center with my three blocks of infantry, and as well the flank with my um, signs that destroy my chaos knights down the left hand side. Now, if you'll notice, I have two uh, blood crushers kind of located on the right there. Those guys are supposed to be my um, Cannon, skull cannons of corn. I decided to experiment with those and see exactly how those work out. So those guys will be protecting my right hand flank. So I do have some shooting elements in this army and there are two cannons so I'm really excited to see exactly what happens. Um, my biggest concern for my enemy right now are on his flanks. As you can see he's got that huge unit of inner circle knights with great weapons. Uh, those guys are the vacant brotherhood. They're located on the left hand side. I'm really worried about those guys. At the same time I'm also really worried about the guys in the center. Uh, specifically that horde unit of 40 great swords. I'm really worried about those guys. And same thing with his two steam tank cannons. Uh, he's got two steam cannons in his army, which gives him a grand total of three cannons in total and a hell blaster volley gun. So this army is definitely kitted out to kill, and I got my work cut out for me. So like I said before, the plan is just to charge across the battlefield as quickly as possible, engage in close combat, hopefully I can do some breakage, and then of course run him down and destroy him. So with the battle plan over with, let's go and talk about deployment real quick. So first of all, we're going to start off with the Schwarzwald Free Company. So over here in the far left-hand flank, we have the Vagrant Brotherhood. It is a unit of 20 Inner Circle Knights. They have full command. They've also got Bartered War Horses wearing full plate armor shield. They also have great weapons as well. And also leading them is uh, Sir Tribal Kraus. He is the Vagrant Knight. He is a Captain of the Empire. Uh, he's got full plate armor as well as great weapon, Bartered War Horse, and shield. And he is also packing the Crown of Command, which means that this unit is always stubborn. So not only did they got all 3d6 for their break test and pick the lowest two numbers but they're also stubborn as well which is pretty deadly right next on the right hand side that is the blue company's unit of 20 halberdiers with light armor they're armed with halberds as well they are the attachment to the yellow company i'm uh, sorry the black company which is on the next slide and also you can see a five-man attachment of archers for rommel's rangers and in the center, this is the Black Company. It is a unit of 37 great swords with full command. They're also packing the uh, standard discipline, giving them plus one to the leadership. They also have uh, full command on this one as well. Great uh, full, armor, plate, full plate armor as well as great weapons. Now, the reason why they have the standard, uh, the standard discipline is because the general for the army is also in this unit as well. It is led by Gregor von Koenigsmark. He is an arch lector. He's also the general. He's got a great weapon. He's also packing battle prayers. He's equipped with the armor of meteoric iron, giving him a plus one... Uh, 
armor save, and he also has the White Cloak of Ulrich, giving enemies minus one to hit him in close combat, a five up ward save as well, and a two up ward save against flaming attacks. So he is pretty much kid out to be in you know, to be pretty much unkillable. Right next to him, of course, is Victor Hellsbrad of the Wilds. He is a level four Lore of Life wizard, Battle Wizard Lord. Uh, he's also got the Book of Asher, giving him plus one bonuses to cast as well as dispelling, and his spells are Earth Blood, Flesh to Stone, Throne of Vines, as well as Regrowth. Also in this unit too is Dieter Moons, the Griffin Guard. He's another captain of the Empire. Uh, he basically has the whole line special rule. He's also the army's battle standard bearer. He's packing great weapon, full plate armor as well as a shield, and he's got the Griffin Banner, which basically doubles the amount of rank bonuses they get in close combat. However, they can never pursue the enemy if they decide to overrun because of, of the Griffin Banner. Right next on the right hand side, that is Red Company, as a detachment of 20 Halberdiers that attach to the Black Company. And up in the front is Rommel's Rangers. It is a unit of 10 archers with two units of five detachment archers uh, on either side of them as well. Behind them of course is also Donner, their great cannon, and behind them is Maximilian Max there on the right hand side. Uh, he is a level 2 battle wizard with the lore of light, uh, sorry lore of metal, and he's packing the enchanted blades of Ivan as well as glittering robes for his spells. And uh, that pretty much makes the center for King Khalifa. And finally, on the far right hand side of his deployment area is two steam tanks. On the left hand side, that is the Panzer Wolf. On the right hand side, that is the Panzer Baron. And on the top of that hill, there is the uh, Blitzen, which is the Hell Blaster Volley Gun, providing overwatching fire. And that pretty much makes up King Khalifa's, Khalifa's deployment on this one. Alright, so starting on my left hand flank for the Gore Pilgrims of the Bloodwind Spoil. On the left hand side there, that is the Scions of the Destroyer. It is a unit of eight Chaos Knights of Corn. They got Musician as well as Standard Bearer. They have Bartered Chaos Steeds. They have Ensorcerer Weapons, Chaos Armor, and Shields. They also have the Standard Discipline, giving them plus one to later leadership. Now, they may not be able to use the General's Inspiring Presence ability, but that's because they're usually so far away from them. Leading that unit is Arbal the Destroyer, my Exalted Hero of Corn. He's also my army's Battle Standard Bearer. He's got uh, Great Weapon as well as Chaos armor and shield. He's got the Helm of Many Eyes giving him plus one to his armor save as well as always strike first. He does suffer from stupidity but with that leadership of nine because plus one up to nine because of the standard discipline it might be able to help him out. He's also packing the Chalice of Chaos. He's also got Soul Feeder and he's mounted on a demonic mount with Barding. And that makes up my deployment here on the left hand side. In the center lines, I have my three blocks of infantry. On the left-hand side, that is the Flayers of the Eight Points. It is using 24 Blood Letters of Corn with Musician as well as Standard Bear. They're also equipped with Hellblades. In the center there, that is a unit called the Marked Men. It is a unit of 26 Chaos Warriors of Corn with full command. They're also packing Chaos Armor and Halberds. And they also have the Banner of Swiftness, giving them plus one movement. And leading them is Scala Asyla in Angrafim. He is the special character. He's also the general of my army as well. He's basically a souped up Chaos Spawn. He's also got the Brass Collar of Corn for him as well. And right next on the right hand side, that unit is called the Black Legion. It is a unit of 24 um, Chaos Chosen with uh, full command on that as well. And also, uh, they also have the Banner of Rage, that way they never lose their frenzy. And then finally behind them is Zvarthal, the Juggernaut. He is a Chaos Sorcerer Lord, level 4 wizard with lore of metal. On this one, he has Searing Doom, Gehenna's Golden Hound, Final Transmutation, as well as Enchanted Blades of uh, uh, Alban, is what he's basically packing on this one. He's riding a war sh Chaos War Shrine as well, so that way he's got the Giver of Glory ability as well. He's also packing the Sword of Might to give him plus 1 strength, Enchanted Shield to give him a 1 up armor save. He's also got the Staff of Sorcery, giving him a plus 1 bonus for dispels, and at the same time, he's also got the Dostos, so that way he can reroll filled armor saves. And that pretty much makes him my center deployment on this one. And from the far right hand side, I have my two Skull Cannon of Corn proxies. They are represented there by the two Blood Crushers. I have the Skull Crush on the left hand side and the Blood Crush on the right hand side. And those are two uh, proxies for Corn uh, Skull Cannons. And that pretty much makes up my deployment for this one. So with deployment over with, we go directly to the top of turn number one, and King Khalifa and I roll off for initiative to see who will be going first. Alright, so that takes directly to the top of turn number one, and Chaos Legion gets the initiative on this one. I get to go first, and the first thing I do, of course, is move as quickly as I possibly can. First of all, I march up my three units of infantry. I move up the Flares of the Eight Points, the Marked Men, as well as the Black Legion. Uh, the Black Legion are behind the building right now. It's supposed to represent the fact that they're inside the building is what it is supposed to be as well. And then also move up my two Skull Cannons, the uh, Skull Crusher and the Blood Crusher, and get them lined up so that way they can open fire their cannons directly to the Steam Tanks. Now on the left hand side, I didn't march up my uh, Science of Destroyer, I just kind of moved them slightly because I don't want to be countercharged. I want the one doing the charging. Hopefully what will happen is that King Cleave will take the bait, he'll try to charge the Vacant Brotherhood, fail his charge, and then I can countercharge with my own guys and destroy him that way. And uh, that pretty much makes a new phase for this one. 
So here's a close up of my Scions of the Destroyer taking some partial cover behind the King in Yellow statue so that way I can do a counter charge and hopefully destroy the Vagrant Brotherhood, that huge unit of Inner Circle Knights. And here's a close up shot of the Flares of the Eight Points as well as my marked men trying to move as quick as they can with Zvarthal the Juggernaut in tow to lend some magical support. And here's a close of the Black Legion, which is currently occupying the ruined building there in the middle, as well as the Skull Crusher, as well as the Blood Crusher, my two proxy Skull Cannons of Corn. So with the move phase over with, you go directly to the Magic phase. And in the Magic phase, the Winds of Magic recede, because I rolled Snake Eyes, so because of that, uh, nothing really happens. We don't have a Magic phase as well. And to make matters worse, what ends up happening is that each of my Demon units will suffer double casualties for instability rules, uh, because the magical winds that keep them incorporeal is no longer working. So that part was kind of rough. First time I get to use a level 4 Wizard of my army, and this happens, which is also kind of ironic, I guess. So with the magic phase over with, we go directly to the shooting phase, which is kind of interesting to say because I never thought I'd be shooting with a chaos army. So what I do is I open up with both the skull crusher as well as the blood crusher, and I concentrate fire on the panzer baron, which is the steam tank there on the right hand side. Both of my cannon shots hit. One inflicts four wounds, the other one inflicts, uh, sorry, one inflicts five wounds, there we go, and the other one inflicted four wounds. So because of that, I was able to just blow up the entire steam tank, well, taking up all ten of its wounds, which is really awesome as well. So that's one less steam tank I have to worry about. About. And man, skull cannons are really awesome. So with that over said done with, we go directly to the bottom terminal one for the Empire, and this photo is taken after the movement phase. And as you can see in this photo, the Empire had done brought it. First of all, King Khalifa he declares a charge with the Vagrant Brotherhood, and I'm thinking that's a pretty long distance, but okay, let's do this. So he rolls, and when he has he has the uh, what's called the uh, the Steel Standard, which means that he gets to re-roll ones whenever he rolls a one for charge distances, pursuits, and flees, and all that kind of stuff. And plus he has Swift Stride, and they also ignore our barding rules, so they don't have to worry about losing an inch of movement because of barding. So he rolls his three dice. He rolls two ones as well as a six. He picks up the two ones, or re-rolls them again. He gets a two as well as a five, and he takes the five and the six for eleven with his movement. He just tears across the battlefield and smashes directly into my Scions of the Destroyer, which is a really bad place for my guys to be at. So that part was absolutely tragic because I wanted to do the charging with my Destroyer unit and not be charged at. At the same time, he also marches up Rommel's Rangers. So. The 10 archers and the units of 5 detachment, ar uh, detachment archers, uh, they just march up forward, going through the buildings and taking cover positions right in front, acting as a speed bump to my army. Now, the thing about this little technique is that I'm very familiar with what King Khalifa does. What King Khalifa usually does is that he usually sends up his skirmishers ahead of time for his forces to delay my actions, so that way he can do some more shooting at me. And what he does is he buffs them with lore of uh, life as well as lore of metal spells, what he does. Usually what he does is gets off a combination of flesh to stone to make them tougher, and usually gets kind of earth blood, so that way they get some regen. At the same time, some kind of lore of metal thing, either giving them armor saves or giving them the ability to fight back in close combat. And he does that because he makes them kind of like a really hard speed bump that way it interferes with my movement, buys some time to maneuver around and to shoot up my army. So it's a very common delaying tactic that I'm used to seeing all the time from King Khalifa. And the worst part about it is, it usually works. So here's a close-up of the move phase. You can see that the uh, Vagrant Brotherhood have smashed completely into the Scions of the Destroyer, which is really bad. Um, a 21 great weapon packing Inner Circle Knights is no joke. Now, the only thing I have on him, of course, they have more attacks than he does because all my guys are frenzied and also an Exalted Champion. But still, this is going to be a tough nut to crack because the Vagrant Brotherhood, man, they destroy units in combat. And here's a close-up of his archers, uh, sitting up in their skirmish formation to act as a delaying action to prevent me from getting to his main body. And like I said before, in quite some length, uh, this is a brilliant tactic that King Khalifa does in order to uh, stop me from advancing any further. And here's a close-up of his main lines, just staying exactly where they are because there's no need for them to move because that's what they do best. They fight defensively. And lastly, here's a close-up of the Panzer Baron, uh, just kind of maintaining his current position, as well as Blitz in the Hell Blood Body Hell. Blaster, volley gun. There we go. So with all the uh, movement phase over with, we go directly to the magic phase. And the magic phase, I actually did a pretty good job stopping most of my opponent's spells. I'm noticing now that having a level 4 Chaos Sorcerer Lord is a different, is a really big impact on the magic phase for me. Because you have to bring a Sorcerer in order to stop what my opponent is doing most of the time for magic. I really don't care so much about my Sorcerer casting spells, but I am worried about him stopping my enemy from casting spells. And having that plus 1 to dispel the Staff of Sorcerer is really helping out a lot. However though, I can only stop so many spells. I mainly stopped Throne of Vines, I stopped um, Earthblood, I also stopped... Um, 
flush the stone is what I mainly did. Just to stop those spells from getting through. However, he was able to slip through glittering robes off on these guys, giving them a 5-up scaly save. But that's not such a big deal because if I should gauge these guys in close combat, my strength bonuses from my halberds alone will get rid of that armor, armor uh, bonus. So, not too worried about that too much. In the shooting phase, however, it was not that great for me. Uh, what ended up happening is that King Khalifa opened up with both Donner the Great Cannon as well as the Panzer Bearing, destroying the Skull Crusher and killing that right off the bat, so that was super tragic. And at the same time, Blitzen, the Hell Volley Blaster, Hell Blaster Volley Gun, gets off 20 shots off onto the Blood Crusher as well and kills off both of my Skull Cannons of Corn. So just like that, my two rare choices have been shot off the table, and I'm really thinking about maybe looking at my list again. <laughs> So with that we go to the combat phase over here in the top left corner of the battlefield. In the end I was able to kill Sir Tybalt Kraus. Uh, our ball destroyer has to issue a challenge because Eye of the Gods and Sir Tybalt Kraus stepped up in order to take him on. Needless to say, our ball destroyer had no problem whatsoever killing Sir Tybalt Kraus. I killed him and got two additional points after him for killing him and uh, for the overkill bonus. In the end I was able to kill three more members of the Vagrant Brotherhood and the Vagrant Brotherhood was able to kill two members of the Scions of the Destroyer. Uh, needless to say, I won combat on this one, but even though I killed Sir Tybalt Kraus and he had the command on command, this unit still has stubborn because they have more ranks than I do. So because of that, they are steadfast, they pass their leadership tests, and they stay exactly where they're at as well. Um, I don't really show this, but we did, of course, I forgot to take a picture of it. We did combat reforms so that way we can square off against each other evenly. I reformed so that way more of my forces can uh, engage in close combat. So while it was pretty good that I killed a lot more of the Inner of the Lights than uh, my opponent did for me, the difference though is that he has numbers and I don't. So I can can't afford to lose my knights as he can as he can't because he's got plenty of them so i'm going to, have to rethink my strategy here in the top left hand corner here and figure out some things to you know help out my signs of destroyer so with that, we go directly to the top of turn number two for the Chaos Legion, and um, I decided to try to bring some charges in. Uh, first of all, I declare a charge with my. Um, I with both my uh, I try to declare a charge with the black with my uh, with my marked men is what I try to do. So I declare a charge against directly against Rommel's Rangers and the main body of Rommel's Rangers decides to flee as a reaction to that. And the same thing with their attachments, they also flee as well. They run away. They actually go back I think eight or nine inches what they end up doing, going back almost to the main line as well. Unfortunately, I have to charge anyways because I don't restrain very well and I only move up an inch, uh, a couple inches forward with my marked men, so that part was kind of sad as well. I then also try to charge with the Black Legion, try to charge directly to Rommel's Rangers, but unfortunately I feel my charge as well. So they come pouring out of the building and then just stopping right in the gap, which is actually a really excellent position for King Khalifa's forces to start shooting at them with their artillery for the next turn, so that did not work out according to plan. So because of that, I move up Svarthal, the Juggernaut, right behind the, mar uh, the marked men so that way you can lend some magical support and finally the last thing I do of course is I decide to move uh, do a swift reform and move out of the building with my flares day points so that way they can charge directly into the right hand flank of the vacant brotherhood during my next turn uh, because uh, like I said before they are slowly grinding through my signs of destroyer and I can't have that I can't let that happen because I have to be able to assault that left hand flank if I'm going to be successful in this battle so here's a close up of the move phase. As you can see, the Signs of the Destroyer are still engaged with the Vagrant Brotherhood, and you can also see the flares of the eight points getting ready to help out as best they can. And here's a close up of the Black Legion, as well as the Marksmen felling their charges with Svarthal the Juggernaut uh, lending some magical support. And here's a close up of Rommel's Rangers breaking and fling, so that way they as a result for the charges, because that's what King Khalifa does. He is really good at using his skirmishers effectively. Um, he uses them as a beautiful screen in order to stop me from engaging his forces, and I've seen him use these guys time and time again to do that. It's an actual brilliant thing as I end up working them. So uh, yeah, that part was actually kind of crazy. So with that, we go directly to the combat phase. And the reason why that is the case is because my magic phase was a wash. I got nothing accomplished. So because of that, as you can see in this photo, the combat between the Scions of the Destroyers as well as the um, as well as well the Vagrant Brotherhood it goes another round. And I forgot to mention this as well. Um, Arbol got plus one to his toughness after he killed uh, Sir Tybalt Kraus. I forgot to mention on that because he rolled up on the Eyes of the Gods table. So once again, Arbol the Destroyer has to issue a challenge because of Eyes of the God chart. And the champion for this unit also steps up as well. So the champion for the Vagrant Brotherhood takes on Arbol Destroyer. Needless to say, I kill that champion and then also, you know, do it three times over. So that way I have more uh, three points for overkill as well. And at the same time, I think I also get plus one of those armor save is what I get for the result, but it doesn't really matter because Arbol already has a one-up armor save, so not much there. 
After that, of course, combat resumes between as normal. I managed to kill three more members of the Vagrant Brotherhood, which is all kinds of awesome. However, the Vagrant Brotherhood was able to kill three of my Chaos Knights, and that part was totally unacceptable as well. Needless to say, I won this battle by uh, four kills, but like I said, um, the Vagrant Brotherhood have more ranks than I do. So because of that, they are steadfast, they roll against them unmodified leadership, and they stay another turn because these guys are grinders, is what they do. That's why they are great weapons, that way they're always hitting at a high strength, no matter what they're doing and that part was absolutely horrible. All right, so that over with, we go directly to the bottom turn number two for the Empire, and this photo is taken after the move phase, and as you can see, uh, some more dramatic movement taking place, primarily with the Skirmishers. So the Skirmishers, of course, rally. They turn around 180, and they go right back and march forward directly to my main battle lines to, once again, act as a speed bump to my forces. So that part is kind of crazy. He then also moves up both the red as well as the blue company, their normal moon allowance, so that way they have like this kind of nice curved defensive positions so that way they can assault my flanks if I manage to charge directly into the um, into the uh, black company so that way they can counter charge with his flanking units so that part's kind of crazy uh, the steam tank does generate steam points it generates enough steam points just to turn slightly because it's also within range to open up with a steam gun and it's going to use the other two point uh, three points of the steam gun to get into a strength five steam gun I think we're trying to go with so that's going to be really scary because it's going to hit me with the flamer template so that part's going to be kind of rough at the same time the vacant brother stays up in the upper left hand corner because they're currently engaged with the scions of the destroyer so here's a close-up of the Vagrant Brotherhood still engaged in close combat with the Science Destroyer. And as you can see, I only have four Chaos War Knights left. I have my Exalted Champion and three Chaos Knights, and that's all I have. Whereas uh, these guys are still pretty much, pretty strong, all things considered. So uh, King Khalifa is really grinding down my Science Destroyer, which is really bad. And here's a close-up of his skirmishers once again, forming up right right there and, and forming up in a line so that way to delay my actions once again. And that's actually a really good technique for him because if I do manage to charge Rommel's Rangers and they manage to stay, I'm of course going to destroy that unit. That's not going to be so bad. And then I'm going to overrun, which would be awesome. The problem though is if I charge into the Black Company, I get countercharged by his two units of Halberdiers because they're detachment guys. And so I do have to worry about that. So that part, not so ideal. But you know, them's the bricks at this point. Here's a close-up of King Khalifa's main lines. As you can see, his black company stays exactly where they're located at, and the two companies, the uh, blue company and the red company, they move up their normal moon allowance, so that way they can counter-charge if uh, I should charge directly to the black company. And finally, here's a close-up of the Panzer Wolf, just turning a little bit to the left-hand side, so that way it can line up its uh, steam cannon, uh, steam gun rather, directly into the black company, which is all kinds of bad. So once again during the magic phase, my opponent was able to sneak in glittering robes off onto the uh, onto the uh, skirmishers of the Rommel's Rangers. Uh, he actually got that spell off first and let it go through. However, I did stop his other spells. I stopped Throne of Vines as well as Flush to Stone because I am not I don't have a tolerance at all for those two spells. So I was able to do that. So I considered a very successful magic phase for me with my dispelling. Having that level four with the dis uh, staff of sorcery for dispels is really helping out my army because magic was kind of a weak point for my army at this point. But that was because I was running an all corn list. So. So that part was kind of nice. So with the magic phase over with, we go directly to the shooting phase. And the shooting phase, all 20 archers of Rommel's Rangers managed to plink off two of the marked men, so that part was kind of sad. However, as you can see there on the right hand side though, the steam cannon does go off and managed to kill three members of the Black Legion, so that part was not so great, so that part was kind of rough. At the same time, as you can see that Blitzen also opened up with its can grape shot, uh, with its uh, Hellblaster volley gun as well, managed to plink off, I think, what was it, six? Yeah, managed to kill six members of the, marked, uh, the Black Company, so that part was really, really rough as well. I don't mind telling. So with the shooting phase over, we go directly to the combat phase, and once again, as you can see here, it actually ended up being aces for me. I managed to kill three members of the Vagrant Brotherhood, so that part was kind of nice. And plus, at the same time, they are no longer steadfast because they don't have more ranks than I do either. Unfortunately for me, though, King Cleaver rolls like a boss, and these guys, I think he rolled like a four, so because of the Vagrant Brotherhood, are not going anywhere, and they managed to pass their break test, which was actually kind of sad. And to make matters worse, he decides to combat reform his forces real quick and puts them in a column formation where it has two ranks, so that way he adds more to his steadfast as well. So that part was kind of interesting. However, I'm not sweating it too much because my turn is next, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to send my flares the eight points directly into the right-hand flank of the Vagrant Brotherhood and hopefully kill these guys once and for all. Alright, so that takes directly to the top of turn number three for the Chaos Legion, and this photo is taken after the movement phase, and the first thing I do, of course, is I declare some charges. I charge in with the flares of the eight points, they go directly into the right-hand flank of the uh, Vagrant Brotherhood, 
At the same time, I also declare a charge with the Marked Men directly into Rommel's Rangers. Rommel's Rangers, of course, accepts the charge, which causes their skirmishers to rank up into a line of uh, 10 fighters. And he decides to countercharge with his two detachments, and they go directly into my uh, flanks of my unit. So, because of the Marked Men are now surrounded on three sides by skirmishers. Luckily for me, though, the skirmishers won't disrupt me because they're just skirmishers. They won't be able to disrupt my army. But at the same time, though, I do have to kill through these guys, and if I don't kill, at least, if I don't, if I have at least one guy still sticking around, uh, it will keep me in combat and delay me for another turn, so I gotta worry about that. I then also charge in the Black Legion. The Black Legion goes tearing through the building and goes directly into the Red Company to take on that flanking unit, so that way I don't have to worry about those guys. And of course, the last thing I do is I move up Swarthal the uh, Juggernaut, so that way he can square off against the Panzer Wolf, and hopefully I can put some harm on him using some lore of metal magic. And that pretty much makes it the move phase for this one. So here's a close-up of the Flares of the Eight Points going directly into the right-hand flank of uh, the Vagan Brotherhood, and I'm super excited to see how that combat's going to go because it's about time that my Flares of the Eight Points got into the game, and hopefully they'll be able to tear up this unit of knights really quickly. And here's a close-up of the Marked Men going directly into Rommel's Rangers and also being countercharged. so that's kind of interesting. I'm not really sweating these guys, though, because with my high-strength attacks and the number of attacks I get off, uh, that's not going to be so bad. And you can also see Swarthal the weakest, uh, Swarthal the Juggernaut in the back there, squaring off to really take on the, uh, the Steam Tank. So with the move phase over with, you go directly to the magic phase. And the magic phase, I roll a 9, also known as Korn's Wrath, but unfortunately nothing really happened with Korn's Wrath, so it became more like Korn's uh, gentle love tap for all kind of for all intents and purposes, so that part was kind of crazy. However, I did have a pretty, uh, pretty fantastic magic phase, all things considered. First thing I do is I target Dieter Moon's the Griffin Guard, which is the battle center bearer for the unit of the Black Company, as also the battle center bearer for the entire army. I get off Gehenna's Golden Hounds off on him, and unfortunately for my opponent King Cleveland, he filled all of his lookout sir rolls for him, and just like that, I was able to kill that guy and manage to kill the battle center bearer, earning me an additional 100 extra points for killing the army's uh, battle center bearer, and at the same time taking away their double rank bonuses. So that part is kind of cool. And as you can see, I was able to kill the Panzer Wolf. And the reason why is because I cast the boosted version of Searing Doom. I got 14 hits on this guy. All I had to basically do is roll 1-up armor saves on that because of uh, metal shifting ability. I put 12 wounds when it was all said and done on this steam tank, and just like that, the Panzer Wolf is dead. However, to cast that spell, I did have to use Irresistible Force, and I miscast 2 on that one. Klaatu! Mirada! <laughs> And I kill my level 4 classers and it happening. I rolled a 1 for the test to see if he gets stuck on the warp and I failed. So because of that, Zmarth all the weakest gets sucked into the warp because apparently Korn doesn't like the fact that I'm using magic in this army and he gets killed, which means I have no magic phase. And worse than that, I have no way of dispelling my opponent's spells now, which is even worse. So with that over with, we go directly to the combat phase, and in the combat phase, as you can see, I managed to kill four members of the Vagrant Brotherhood. The Vagrant Brotherhood, however, managed to kill my last three Chaos Knights of the Scions of the Destroyer, so that unit is toast, so that part's kind of sad. However, Arbol the Destroyer is still alive, and same thing with my Flares, the eight points. Needless to say, my opponent had to take a break test. He failed his break test, he ran back 8 inches, I pursued 6, I'm only 2 inches behind these guys and hopefully I can overrun these guys and destroy them. The only sad thing is that they're not below a quarter strength yet, they have one more guy left before they're at quarter strength, so because of that they can rally next turn, so that's not going to be so great. So hopefully I'll be able to destroy these guys before that happens because these knights have been, you know, holding me up on the left hand flank for far too long. And in the center, I had no problem killing Rommel's Rangers. I killed those guys the last man, just destroyed it right off the bat. The problem, though, is because I charged into Rommel's Rangers and destroyed them, I have to overrun. I have frenzy. I have no choice in the matter, so I have to overrun, and I overrun seven inches forward. So because I go flying directly in between the two buildings, which puts me in a perfect position to be charged in both the flank and the front by King Khalifa's forces. Like I said, King Khalifa uses his skirmishers like a genius. He's a genius, um, tactical genius when it comes to using his skirmishers because he knew, he knew I had to overrun, which makes him, makes it into like a perfect trap. The only thing way that could have been better for him is if my Black Legion hadn't charged directly into his Red Company because then he can get me into full envelopment. But no, he'll still be able to get me into a double envelopment. He'll be able to charge forward with his uh, great swords directly into the front of my marked men and then flank them on the left hand side with the Blue Company disrupting me. So that part was horrific. 
However, there is a silver lining. As you can see, the red company is down to five men, <laughs> which is absolutely insane. That part was also all, also really awesome as well. The only problem, though, is that um, my opponent is... These, these guys are a detachment to the uh, great swords, and their stubborn rule applies to them. So I could have been killing all these guys all day long, but it doesn't matter because they get to use their unmodified leadership. And to make things worse, they get to use their general's leadership, which is leadership 10, um, with the, uh, with the uh, stubborn special rule, and that's because they're a detachment. They all those, you know, all those kind of carry over as well. So that part was kind of sad. They do manage to kill one member of my Black Legion, but needless to say, it doesn't really matter uh, because these guys stick and they're not going anywhere. So that being said, we go directly to the bottom of the turn for the Empire. All right, so with that, we go directly to the bottom of turn number three for the Empire. This photo is taken at the move phase, and the first thing that is up happening, of course, is that he declares some charges. Uh, just like I said, I did, like he did, like I said he would, he charges forward. So what he does, he decides to charge forward with the members of Rommel's rank, uh, with the uh, members of the, um, of the of the Black Company. They go tearing across the battlefield directly into the Marked Men. At the same time, the Blue Company charges directly into the left-hand flank of the Marked Men as well, disrupting them and catching them in the flank. So that part was absolutely insane. At the same time, if I remember correctly too, his character doesn't charge either. His character decides to stay behind as it ends up happening. So because of that, the wizard is left on the hill while the rest of the uh, fighters go up forward. Uh, he also manages to rally the Vagrant Brothers. So those guys turn 180 to face off against Arbol Destroyer. And uh, as you can see, the Red Company is still currently engaged in close combat with the uh, Black Legion. And that pretty much makes up the move phase for this one. So here's a close of the move phase in the left hand flank. As you see, the Vagan Brotherhood has turned 180 to face off against Arbol Destroyer as well as the Flayers of the Eight Points. So these guys are still going to be a major thorn for me. So that's okay though. I like my odds. And here's a close of the Black Company going directly into the Marked Men as well as the Blue Company charging into the left hand flank as well. And this one is not so great. And that's because uh, my opponent's got stubborn. Great wielding weapon, wielding fully plate armored infantry taking me in the front, and halberdiers on my flank, and it's disrupting me, so I have no rake bonuses in this one, so that part is kind of rough as well. So with move phase over with, they go directly in the magic phase, and as you can see, my opponent got a, quite a bit of spells off. Um, it ends up happening that when you don't have an opponent with a level 4 wizard to stop you, you can do pretty much whatever you want. So as you can see here, he gets a lot of spells off, and I was just powerless to stop him. He had the Book of Asher giving a 5 of casting bonus with all of his spells. So first thing that Dorsey does, of course, he gets off Throne of Vines, so that way he has buffs to all of his spells afterwards. And then, of course, the next thing he does is he casts um, Flesh to Stone, which means that all of the uh, units... The units that gain flesh of stone, that unit as well as their detachments also get that ability as well as, as well. So because of that, his uh, halberdiers are all now toughness seven, and same thing with his great swords. They're all toughness seven now as well, which is crazy. And then he also gets earth blood off, which means that all those guys in the detachments also get a four up regen save. And I have no flaming attacks. These guys have a four up ward save for all intents and purposes as well. He then of course then casts uh, with his uh, gold caster, uh, metal caster, Maximilian Max. He casts his scaly skin off on the units as well, giving them plus two scaly armor save for them with glittering robes. So because of that now, the halberdiers are now armor saving four up, regen four up, toughness of seven halberdiers. All right, you're seeing how this is starting to go. And then at the same time, his, uh, his, uh, Great Swordsman from the Black Company, they are armor saved, two, two up armor saved, four up regen saving, strength seven Great Swords with strength five attacks. So that's pretty horrible. And then he gets a battle prayer off. He gets off the battle prayer of Hammers of Sigmar, which means that he gets to reroll all failed wounds uh, for all of his guys in Canada Close Combat. And they also have hatred as well because the uh, Arch Elector gives them hatred for the very first round of combat. And that also applies to their attachments as well. So that is horrific. Oh, I forgot to mention. I forgot the uh, most obvious one, too. Um, he casts Regrowth and gets a 7 on that one. And he decides to put all seven of those guys in the Red Company, so all seven guys pop up. And because he gets one, two, three extra spells off as well, uh, four spells off as well, he puts up four more additional Red Company guys. So those guys are now 15 guys on the right-hand flank, bringing back those guys from the dead. That was absolutely horrible, and I was absolutely powerless to stop my opponent from getting those spells off. It was absolutely ridiculous how buffed up these guys are, really are now. Now, the only good news is that his shooting phase is an absolute disaster. He tries to shoot with Donner, the Great Cannon, directly into the Flares of the Eight Points, but unfortunately, when he fired for the bounce, roll for the bounce of the Cannonball, he rolled a misfire, so the Cannonball just landed about six inches away from my um, blood letters. So that was the only nice thing that happened. The Magic Phase, oh my god, the Magic Phase. He managed to dominate on that one. So the magic phase over with, we go directly to the combat phase, and as you can see, it is bad. 
kid is really bad. First of all, I have declared a challenge with my champion for the Marked Men because I as the gods, and his general, Arch Lector Gregor von Konigsmark, decides to answer the call. Um, I do nothing to him. Uh, all of my wounds, just, all of my attacks just kind of bounce off his armor, and then he manages to pile drive and stove in the head of my uh, champion with two great weapon attacks from his hammer, and manage to kill him right off the bat. So my champion is dead with an additional wound over carryover for overkill. Not that my buddy King Khalifa needs it. So, of course, I get to attack first because I have higher initiative, and I also have halberds too, but apparently having a 5-up, a 6-up, a striking back with my halberds against these toughness 7 uh, great swordsmen, I do nothing, and I do nothing against the blue company as well. However, when it comes to the counterattack, though, the blue company has no problem slipping the runes through a couple of my guys on the flank, but the real killers, though, were the black company. As you can see, I only have 11 guys left out of that huge unit that I started off with, and they all got chopped to pieces on that part, so that part was absolutely atrocious. Needless to say, I failed this battle, this combat, uh, in spades, and I had to roll snake eyes in order to stick it, and I don't roll snake eyes. And so because of that, I run away, because I have to. You know what my value was when I rolled to see how far I got? I rolled Snake Eyes then. So I only run away two inches. The blue company decides to pursue. They go up number, I think, seven inches what they end up overrunning. So because of that, they chop up and kill the marked men to the last man and end right there relatively in the middle of the ruined town. And of course, my buddy King Cleveland has a combat reform with the black company, and they form in such a way to square off against the left flank of the black legion, which is absolutely atrocious. And then combat. Combat between the Black Legion and the Red Company. I do manage to kill two of those Abadirs, which is kind of nice. That's all I was able to do, though, because those toughnesses, wards, uh, region saves, as well as scaly skin saves, as well as their uh, rerolls to wound. Uh, I did nothing to those guys as well. I did, and they in turn, they managed to kill two members of my Black Company. Luckily for me, though, the Black uh, the Black Legion does stick there. They don't have to worry about running away, so they're there for another round of combat. But then again, I'm also have to worry about the Great Swords flanking me, so... That's going to be a huge problem. So with that, that takes directly to the top of turn number four for the Chaos Legion, and I gotta make some moves real quick. So the first thing I do, of course, is I declare a charge. Arbol Destroyer charge directly into what's left of the Vagrant Brotherhood, and the same thing with the Flayers of the Eight Points. Uh, they go directly into the Vagrant Brotherhood as well, and I'm really looking forward to destroying those guys. I could still salvage this, maybe. If I can kill off the Vagrant Brotherhood and then attack the Black Company, I might be able to survive this. So, uh, you know, of course, assuming, of course, my, my Black Legion can, and can hold out. If they can hold out just a little further, for a turn, I might be able to turn this around by getting some rear charges, and that's what we're pretty much just kind of hoping for at this point, is just uh, hope at this point. So here's a close-up of Arbol Destroyer, as well as the Flares of the Eight Points, charging directly into the Vagrant Brotherhood, and I'm really looking really excited of eliminating this army. And here's a close-up of the Black Legion, still currently engaged with the Red Company, and I'm looking forward to destroying these guys, if I can. I mean, these guys are so buffed up to beyond belief that I don't think I'll be able to do anything. But hopefully I can survive another round of combat until my guys can basically uh, close up and uh, help them out. So we skip magic and shooting because I don't have it, and we go directly to the combat phase, and as you can see in this photo, I flubbed bad. Our ball of the destroyer rolled, I think, four ones, and I didn't manage to slip a wound through, but one guy was able to save it with an armor save. And then, of course, I attacked with the flares of the eight points. I managed to kill two knights of the Vagrant Brotherhood, which is awesome because of killing blow, so that really helped out. However, when King Khalifa rolled to see if his guys would stay or not, he rolled snake eye. And just like that, those knights are standing their ground. They're not going anywhere because they are like, forget you. We're knights. We don't break. And so we're standing there exactly. Oh, my God. I couldn't believe it. You got that snake eyes results. So because that, my guys are tied up for another turn. And already I'm starting to hear the, the, the funeral bells from my army ringing in the distance. And then over here, oh my god, over here, I don't kill any members of the Red Company at all. Um, I fail to wound anybody. And the Red Company managed to kill two members of the Black Legion, if you can believe it as well. So, they got two kills. Now, I do have a standard bearer, so it drops their value by one. But they have a, I have, uh, they have a rank, and I don't, so that goes back up to two. So they beat me by two. I'm leadership, I think eight is what I am, so I have to roll a six in order to stay. And as you can see there, I rolled a ten instead. And just like that, the Black Company is Fleeing, the Black Legion is fleeing from the Red Company. And as you can see in my pair of red dice, I roll a 5 to escape, and the Red Company rolls a 5 to pursue. And just like that, the Black Legion is killed to a man by some halberdiers. 
And as this is point, ladies and gentlemen, I decided to call it at this point because there's no way I'm going to be able to recount my losses whatsoever. And that brings us directly into the game with the Empire stealing another victory away from the Chaos Legion. And once again, showing the brilliant tactical use of delaying actions by my buddy King Khalifa. So that being said, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go directly to the after action report because this battle report is now officially over. That's it, man. Game over, man. It's game over. I thought about staying. They offered me the chance to lead them, to teach them, to, to be king. Uh-huh. But my place is here, so I swallowed the juice, said the words, and here I am. Did you say the words right this time? Well, maybe I didn't say every single tiny little syllable, no, but basically I said them, yeah. Basically. All right, folks, now it's time for the after action report. This is the part of the battle report where we talk about what went well, what went poorly, and what we can learn for the next time that we do battle. This is the after action report for the Golden Age battle report number 89, and this one ended up being a defeat for yours truly. I managed to score 1,024 points out of King Khalifa, and King Khalifa managed to steal 2,796 points out of me. For my losses, I lost Scylla, Angerfim, Zvarthal, the Juggernaut, the Marked Men, the Scions of the Destroyer, the Black Legion, the Skull Crusher, and the Blood Crusher. King Khalifa, he lost Dieter Moons, the Griffin Guard, Rommel's Rangers, the Panzer Baron, and the Panzer Wolf. And now you know why I call Khalifa King Khalifa. This guy is a boss. The dude is a genius with his Empire Army. He plays this thing like a finely tuned piano because that's exactly what he uses it for. And as you can see, as this as this kid basically just kind of showed here, he just shows he just delayed me with wave after wave of delaying actions. He succeeded with his brilliant use of skirmishers to steal my army's momentum, and then of course then to snare me into a trap to go directly into the black company and then getting enveloped that way as well not to mention the vagrant brotherhood tying up my two of my units for most of the game in the left hand flank was absolutely atrocious for me it worked out great for him because it kept those guys from getting into combat with his main lines allowing him to take me out piece by piece as well not to mention the rommel's rangers stopping my advance for a turn tying me up for another keeping me from engaging him and then having him the ability to shoot my guys up and to delay me i mean it's just all kinds of awesome you see why king khalifa is so good at playing this empire army not to mention that as well a combination of lore of life with metal and bar battle prayers are unstoppable especially when you consider i didn't have a wizard to stop those spells you just saw how powerful those guys came up with their buffs and how powerful they became uh throne of vines with the regrowth giving them the ability to resurrect dead miniatures combined with the four up toughness for flesh of stone as well as the four up regen save from earth blood is an extremely powerful combination and i think the reason why another reason why i lost this battle report is because um i was too concerned about his two steam tanks uh steam tanks are the stuff of nightmares and he's got two of them in this army and i think i was overly concerned with taking on those two steam tanks um that kind of detracted me from taking care of the rest of this army i think that's the reason why i kind of lost this as well um as for using skull cannons this is the very first time you use skull cannons in a battle report i think they're pretty cool i like what they can do because they're deadly because they're cannons but at the same time though i kind of didn't use them like i was supposed to. i threw them away is what i did i threw I, I committed them to combat too quickly so that way i could shoot at his steam tanks i should have kept those guys back is what i should have done use them like the war machines that they are but you know I'm still learning how to use these guys, so it's not so big a deal. I'm um, still trying to figure out the best combination with this army, so that's why I'm experimenting with different units and different combinations of things. So in the end, I will let you know when I do find my magical combination with these guys. It's just taking me a little bit longer than I'm used to using doing this. But either way you look at it, though, this was still an extremely fun game against an amazing opponent, because King Khalifa is a king, and once again, I am looking forward to the rematch against him. So that's a good do for this one, guys. As always, please feel free to like, comment, and or subscribe. Your guys' input is always appreciated. Also check us out on Facebook, Instagram, as well as blogger.com for all the latest greatest hobby news related to this channel. That's going to do it for this week, guys. I'll catch you guys next one. Peace out and stay classy.